Hey everyone, so today I'm sharing with you a video that I actually filmed two months ago, but I just wanted a little bit of separation between me filming it and releasing it because in the video, um, it's unedited, it's, uh, I'm just trying to be as honest as I can, and there's some things I talk about in the video that I just wanted a little bit more time to pass before releasing it. Okay, I think the video will speak for itself. I hope you enjoy it. And I won't see you at the end because I say goodbye in that video. So, goodbye from the future, and here is something from the past. <clears throat> Alrighty. Whoa. Okay. So yeah, man, I've been living in my car for a year, and it's been... Uh, good experience overall and so I figured I would talk about why I decided to do it in the first place what I've learned and why I'm gonna do it in the future so there was a couple events that kind of led me to be able to do this the first was I in 2013 I was in college and I realized I had way too many t-shirts took up a whole drawer and I just didn't like that for some reason um, I guess I felt maybe my life was chaotic and that was contributing to it in some way. So I got rid of a bunch of them, cut it down to like maybe 20 t-shirts or something like that. But that led into a chain of events of me just getting rid of stuff and simplifying my life. And that spanned all the way until December of 2016 and really all the way until March of 2017 because I did a big purge right before I started living in a car which was in March of 2017. So that was happening. Mean meanwhile, I worked at a costume store which led to a critical audition and then I did this event called the Mongol rally and then also my brother's wedding was also a key um, a key event as well so working at the costume store I started working at the costume store because I really just wanted like an easy job the woman who owned the costume store had a bunch of costume stores in Oh, all over the US she had four of them not a, not a whole bunch but the main one was in Florida and so I flew down to Florida and I worked there and then I flew down there a second time and while I was there there happened to be an audition for a regional audition for a bunch of Florida theater companies and so I was like well I might as well go audition so I auditioned and they called me back that day and then I went back to Pittsburgh and didn't hear anything back for a while Meanwhile, I'm getting ready to go on the Mongol Rally. So right before I went on the Mongol Rally, which if you don't know, it's basically an adventure event where, a charity adventure event where you buy a farcically small car in the UK or you drive it from somewhere in Europe. You start in London. We bought our cars in the UK. You start in London with a really small car and you drive it to the capital of Mongolia and you can choose any route you go on and you're basically on your own. And on that trip, I learned a lot just about just about the world, it made the world a much smaller, less scary place to me. Um, I learned just about the joy of having an adventure, and I also learned how little, I also learned the few amount of things that I really need to live, because on that trip I was living out of a backpack because we were crammed into a really small car. So after I came back from the Mongol rally, I got an odd, uh, the theater company that I auditioned for in Florida emailed me and they wanted me to audition a third time. And I really didn't have any money when I came back from the rally. I didn't even have a place to live. I came back and on the trip, like I hadn't set up like where I was going to live for that next semester of school, which was my last semester of school. And so in the middle of the rally, I talked to this girl I knew and she said I could sleep on her couch for a couple weeks as I get situated. So I was living on her couch. I didn't have any money. And then I got an audition, the, the, another audition, a final call back to go down. And I was in this fuck it mentality because I just came back from the rally and I was like, screw it, I'm going to go do it. So I flew down to Florida, spent basically all my money, um, couch surfed with this awesome lady and I had the audition and I booked it. I didn't know that at the time, but I, in a couple months I, 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 I found out. So then I was, so I was, it was guaranteed that I, in January, which was basically right after I graduated college, I was going to have a job acting, which was cool. And they were going to give me housing, so I didn't really have to decide where I was going to live just yet. I was putting it off for another three months by doing that job. So while all this is happening, I'm getting ready to go to my brother's wedding, and I'm the best man, and so I have to give a speech. And I was really nervous about that speech for a whole bunch of reasons. Um, 
particularly just about the dynamic of mine and my brother's relationship over the years, which has been a lot of good and a lot of bad. And for that reason, it was a very stressful event. So leading up to that event, I was drinking a lot, like a ton. I remember we were having like a family party, like a, maybe a week before the wedding in California. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna go, I'll go out and get some, some booze for us or whatever. And I just went straight to the bar and was drinking. And then I finally went to the store and bought a bottle of Patron and I was just drinking it walking down the street. I wasn't in a good place. I was really nervous about this event. And my, and it wasn't just that event. Like I was nervous about life. Like I just graduated college. And so there was a lot of chaos. I was leaving a very secure world of education and going into the real world. So there was a bunch of factors. It wasn't just the wedding, but that was, that was like culminating in like, oh, I had to give the speech. So anyway, um, alcohol is a big factor in this story. That's why, that's why I'm telling you this. So anyway, um, I do the speech. It goes great. I go to Florida and I do the play. And while I'm doing the play, I'm working with, I'm living with another actor in the play who's from New York and he was much more experienced than me as far as being an actor and just about knowledge of the industry in general and he gave me a lot of good advice and basically I decided that I wanted to go to LA but I didn't really feel ready or that it wasn't right and I knew I didn't want to go to New York and so I really didn't know where I wanted to live which is how I kind of ended up living in a car but all of that never would have happened if I hadn't gone on the Mongol rally, gotten rid of all my clothes and possessions. And um, there was a small aspect of just rebelling against the structural norm of society, like go to school, get a place to live, get a job, get a wife. Like I was kind of rebelling against that in some way. So those were the big events that led me to do this. That's why I decided to do this in the first place and the thirst for adventure, which I learned on the Mongol rally. So that is the precursor to all of this. Now, the first year of me living in a car, I basically break up into three segments. From Florida to Phoenix, Arizona. From Phoenix, Arizona to Eureka. And then from Eureka to Big Sky, Montana. That's not the whole first year, but that's like three of the main segments. And then basically from Big Sky, Montana, I came down to Los Angeles and started the next part of my living in a car journey. Um, so I mentioned that alcohol was a big factor in this. And so I guess I should go into that a little bit more, give a little more backstory into that. When I was in high school, I just got involved with, I smoked a lot of pot and I did a lot of drugs, cough medicine being the main one. I took a lot of cough medicine basically every week, every weekend I was drinking a whole bottle of cough medicine for probably the, probably about a year. So I probably did that 50 or 60 times. And after I graduated high school, there was one, I had a seizure one day when I was smoking and then that just freaked me out and I stopped smoking, I stopped doing drugs, I stopped doing everything except drinking and so drinking kind of filled that little void in my, in my life. Um, and so I had kind of a tumultuous relationship with alcohol all f up until college, culminating in when I probably drank the most in my life, which was leading up to my brother's wedding. So after my brother's wedding, I felt a lot of stress gone and I, my body was in terrible shape. I've always been a pretty active person. I've always had pretty decent body, but like after that wedding, I looked terrible. Like I had gained a lot of weight. I, I didn't look healthy in my face. I felt like a different person. And so I made a commitment to get back into shape, which I did over the course of the three months while I was in Florida. And during that time, I stopped drinking alcohol. Um, yeah, I just really, it started out as... I want to stop drinking for like a little bit just because I don't, I've, I've realized how it affected me negatively and then it progressed into, well, it's been a month, I'm going to just maybe just keep going with this. And then when I started living in a car, it was like, well, I definitely can't drink because now I live in my car and if I lose my license, then I lose my whole way of living that I'd been building since 2013, basically. Okay. Let me just check and see. This is still rolling. Yeah. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Everything is good. Um... Is that still on me? Okay, cool. So, part one, from Sarasota, Florida, to Phoenix, Arizona. These were the first few weeks of me living in a car. I went to, like, Mobile, Alabama, and I went to Houston, and I went to Austin, and I went to Phoenix, is where I basically I had a breakdown, because the first month of it or so, it was really fun, because it was new. It was basically like I was camping every day, 
and I was living off my savings. And as my savings started to go down, I started thinking like, oh, well, how am I gonna make money doing this? I was delivering food with Postmates, but then I was literally in my car all day long. I was delivering food and then climbing in the back and sleeping. And it was just like, I was trapped inside this little claustrophobic vehicle and I hated it. So I decided that I can't do Postmates anymore and I had to figure something else out. So I let go of something that was very, very um, stable in my life, which was my job, but it wasn't really beneficial to my life because it was driving me crazy being in the space, so I let it go, and then just chaos erupted, and that culminated in Phoenix. And in Phoenix, Arizona, basically I had a breakdown when I was trying to figure out how I was gonna make money. I drove off into the desert, and I just camped in the desert with, I uh, covered all the clocks, turned off my phone, and just stayed out there, and just kind of allowed nature and the desert to bring me down, and it did, it worked a little bit. So that was the first leg of that, of uh, my first, um, few months of living in a car. Then from Phoenix to Eureka, Eureka was crazy. So during that time, um, shortly after Phoenix, I went to California and I figured out where I was going to make money next. I had booked a job, not theater, but I was going to be working at a resort in Montana. So I knew that was my trajectory. I was going to make my way up the coast of Montana and that gave this whole thing kind of some just the path, the trajectory, and that silenced a lot of my anxieties and worries. It gave me a, a focus. So during that trip, I made my way up to Eureka, and um, I still wasn't drinking alcohol during any of this time or anything like that, but I got to Eureka, and for some reason, I just felt the need to take cough medicine again, which I hadn't done in like... Well, I was 25, and so I probably had, I hadn't done that. I had not done that since I was 18, and so it'd been like seven and a half, close to eight years, because I was about to turn 26, that I'd done that. And for some reason, I just had to do it, and that it 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 fucked me up big time. Like I after that event, like, and this is this is part of Eureka to Big Sky is kind of what what was happening then, but that was so. In Eureka, I did that event, and that was a big kind of a breakdown too. Ultimately, I think it was really positive that I did that because I was kind of scared to do it again because I'd had that seizure, and I had just a lot of ideas about why I had that seizure and kind of how I was living my life, and so I was afraid of it. So in some ways, it was good that I did it just to confront it, but man, it put me in a bad place. Because after I did that, I went into Oregon, and Oregon had legal marijuana, and I, was, I found myself in a dispensary, and I was buying weed and I was and I was buying pipes and stuff like that and I was like it just hit me I was like what the hell am I doing like am I really about to invite this back into my life it's been almost a decade since I've had drugs in my life and now that I've been sober from everything for at that point it was probably two months which was probably the longest time I'd been sober since I was 15 um I was inviting these things back into my life and i it freaked me out. <laughs> and so when I was driving down the road one day, I threw like this weed that I had bought and these pipes just out the window of my car. And then that's been it since then. I haven't, it's, and that was good. It was good that all that happened because it had to, it'd been in the depths and it came bubbling up when I was in Eureka. So anyway, finally letting go of that kind of put me into chaos because it was like, well, what am I going to fill that with? Like, I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to smoke. I'm not going to do drugs. Like that's been a major aspect of just kind of who I was and what I did. And so, I don't know, chaos, chaos by not having that. So anyway, I made my way to Big Sky and um, ended up working there for the summer. And that was really great because I got to make a lot of money. The two other people who I was supposed to be working with on the first day didn't show up. So I was the only server at the restaurant. So I made a boatload of cash, which was great. I was able to pay off a credit card and just kind of make a nest egg so that I was a little bit more stable in my life. Um, let me check the notes and make sure I didn't miss anything. So Big Sky. Big Sky and Beyond, I guess, is where I'm at right now. Whoa. Um, so, like, Big Sky and Beyond. So I made it up to Big Sky. I was working at this resort, and I made a lot of money. Um, I started playing a lot of disc golf, which was really great for me, actually. It was so much fun. And then I kind of fell in love with this girl who was from Taiwan, and then she had to go back to Taiwan. So I had another romance in there. Um, so, after Big Sky, I 
was playing disc golf and I kind of felt that disc golf was going to be the next phase of my life and so I started playing in tournaments and I played in tournaments all the way down the coast towards Los Angeles. I actually played one in Los Angeles and I was planning on going and playing in some bigger tournaments in Texas and Oklahoma but again I was getting low on cash and I didn't want to get back down to zero which is where I was when I was in Big Sky. When I showed up in Big Sky I had like I had like five dollars in my checking account or something like that and that was stress provoking so I didn't want that again so I decided that now was the time to go to LA and maybe start working on my acting career so I drove into the city and I just set up shop and that's where I've been and that's what I've been doing ever since that's kind of where this story ends right now because Although I've, although that's been from October to March, which October, November, December, January, February, March, that's been five months of the first year of me living in a car. I'm not exactly sure what me being L L in LA means in the long term story of my life. So, just thinking on that, I'm thinking if there's anything that I can say about being in LA that I've that I know to be true, and I don't think that there is. Yeah. Okay, so, what did I learn? So it's weird to think like, you know, oh, I learned, I definitely learned this. One thing I definitely learned is that I am adaptable. So like when I first started living like this, it was a little bit chaotic and now I'm very, very grounded in my life and how I live and it feels just like normal life. In the beginning, I would get like this existential dread every day, like how am I gonna fill up my time? And that's ultimately gone now. And I think it's because I've, this lifestyle has led me to realize that with your free time, you need to have like a trajectory or course, otherwise you're going to feel kind of empty. And I feel like I've been able to fill that in a good way. Another good thing that came out of me living in, in this lifestyle is that now I've been sober for almost a year. So I think I did the, I took, I've been sober from alcohol for a year totally. And then I think the last thing that I ever did was smoke a little bit of weed and that was probably in the middle of April and so this is the middle of March now so in a month it'll be one year sober and I don't see that changing anytime soon I feel like I've really been through it with drugs and alcohol and marijuana and I just don't think that that is going to be I don't I don't see that being a part of my future if it is then something has drastically drastically changed and yeah but so that's good too because I don't think that's gonna be a part of my life um what else have I learned that, that. Um, I think that's pretty good. I think I've also learned that the importance of having some money and having a nest egg of money is just God, it's so relieving because like right now the work I'm doing in LA, I'm doing background acting and it's pretty and it fluctuates from week to week. Some weeks I'll work five or six days, some days all week I'll work two. And the fact that I have like a nest egg of money is really grounding and knowing that, you know what, I it's okay. Like everything's going to be fine. Like the money will come. Like I trust that and I just, it's nice. So that's one thing I learned too. Okay. So why I'm going to continue to live a, in a car in the future. So in the beginning, the reason why I was living in a, in a car was because, um, I was motivated by adventure. I was kind of rebelling a little bit and I was a little bit like, I had no idea really where I wanted to live. So those were the main things that were contributing to that. Now, I know where I want to live. I'm not exactly as motivated by the whole adventure of it because I'm pretty much in one same place. The main reason for me is because I am on a quest to get money. And living like this has allowed me to save a lot of money. So that's pretty much why I'm continuing to do this in the future. And that's pretty much it, I guess. That's been my year of living in a car. It's been kind of a crazy convoluted story, but hopefully you got something out of listening to it. If you like this content, be sure to subscribe. I'll be making more content like this in the future, and I'd love to have you around for the ride. Thanks so much, and have a good day.